there's my little square in my normal in my normal landscape and then if I move to the right we've got parallaxing we've got a fog effect we've got some particles we go behind fog in front of fog I feel there's a little bit of depth here let me show you how I did it I'm Xanderwood I make indie games and tutorials on game development I also play your indie games every week on my channel make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video Before we get into the video, a special thank you to James Welch, Basic Terror, Cole Zan, Clone 13, Boozle CC, Jet Simon, Olivia Bernier, Arthur Wobiges, Retro Galaxy, Fan Van, Amari Lewis, Endmark Games, Matt, and Seth Kobol for supporting my game dev journey. If you're looking for free pixel art, tile sets, and royalty free music on a monthly basis, check out the link in the description and consider becoming a Patreon. So I got this comment from Antonio Philippe Rio. Hey Xander, can you do a fog tutorial like Hollow Knight? and also how to add depth to a game. Also like Hollow Knight, I've been trying for a couple of days, but not succeeding. I suggest making this tutorial with the Mossy Cavern tile set. So I didn't download the Mossy tile set because the tiles were huge and I'm a 16 by 16 guy, but let me show you what I've managed to do without it. So let's hit play. There's my little square in my normal, in my normal landscape. And then if I move to the right, we've got parallaxing, we've got a fog effect, we've got some particles, we go behind fog, in front of fog. I feel there's a little bit of depth here. Let me show you how I did it. So first of all, you're going to need some layers. We've got the background layer, which is just the squares, the square background. We've got the fog layer, which is where I put the main fog image. We've got layer zero, which is the edges. We've got the foreground, which is some more fog. We've got another foreground, which is these kind of jagged rocks. And then we've got the HUD, which is just the text. The HUD set on a parallax of zero by zero. That basically means it won't move. So as we move along the screen to the right with this little green square, this will automatically stay in the top right hand corner. So you can see how it's just placed within this dotted section here. That's the viewport. So when I play, it doesn't move with me. It just stays in the top right hand corner all the time. The foreground images, which are these jagged rocks, which are called just tile background two. These are the same image, one on top of the other. And these are on the foreground layer. And this layer has a parallax of 120 on the X and 100 on the Y because we're not moving up and down, we're just moving left and right. And what that does is it moves these in a slightly different time frame as everything else. So these will move 120%, so 20% faster to the right than the background does. So you can see it's moving along the bottom and along the top and it's not in line with the background. Now if I change that, if I go back on the foreground layer and I change the X parallax back to 100, then what's going to happen is it's going to move at the exact same speed as the background. It doesn't look quite as nice. It just looks like it's stuck on in front. So these things, anything when it comes to, when it comes to uh, perspective, anything closer to the camera is going to move faster than things further away. That's why when you look up at the sky and aeroplanes are flying by, they seem like they're going at a snail's pace when in actual fact they're going a lot faster. So there we go. The fog effect. Now I've got one sprite here. This is the sprite that I've used. If I double click, it is just a 250 by 250 square with the paintbrush tool. And I've set the size to that I set it to around about 250, just under 210, somewhere around there, 220, 236, somewhere in that kind of range. And I've, I've dropped the hardness down to zero. The opacity is at one. So if I put the hardness back up at one, it's just a solid circle. If I drop the hardness down, it becomes kind of fuzzy around the edges. And I just click black, and I've just popped a, a dot in the middle there. And then I've stretched it. Um, I, I intentionally wanted to stretch it so it was distorted and I just put that over the background. Now I've also assigned an effect to this. Now if you go over to the left hand side on the properties you can see the effects 
The effect I've added is called swirl. And the radius and the angle I've set to 200. And then when we play that, it kind of gives it a bit of a swirl feel. So you can kind of see that it's not one solid circle in the middle. If I took the swirl off, let's just delete the swirl and just leave it as the sprite that it is. It's just going to be one stretched out circle, which you may feel is better or you may want that. But I wanted a little bit more detail on it. So I added that effect and you can get again, just go to add effect, type in swirl, change the radius to 200, change the angle to 200. And then I feel like it gives it a, a more a more authentic fog feel. Now you can see that some of this fog effect is moving up and down and that is done by a particle effect. And if I double click on one, you can see that it's effectively the same thing I did for the fog effect, uh, except the width and the height is 128 by 128. Again, I've just used a black color and I've just put a dot right in the middle with hardness at zero and the size just slightly smaller. And these are my particles. They're just very, very big particles. If I click on one, we can come over to the properties. We can see the rate is set at 50. If I click preview, you can kind of see what happens. They populate along the bottom and then they gradually drift up. And I've done that by setting the gravity to minus 100. If I set the gravity to minus 600, they would go up a lot faster. So if you had kind of fire, then that might be a better effect. But for fog, fog moves slowly. So I've set it at 100 and they will just gradually move up the screen, giving a kind of nice fog effect. But just one by itself wasn't cutting it for me. So I added a second one at the top with the exact same conditions, the exact same properties. And I set the gravity to 100 rather than minus 100. So it would fall down the screen at the same rate. And then the two converging together over the top of that other fog sprite that I had is what gives it that fog feel. These are on foreground one, which has a parallax of 100. Doesn't need to be 50 on the Y, but 100. And that is effectively how I've made this fog effect. Just two particle effects, a sprite with a fuzzy black dot in the middle stretched out with a twirl effect, and some jagged rocks that I put in the foreground, again on their separate layer, at a parallax of 120. So just remember the takeaway from this video is, in terms of a parallax, if I click on the foreground, the higher that number is, and X again is moving left and right, the higher that number is, the faster these objects are gonna move across the screen. And the lower that number is, the slower they will. But you can play around with it. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. And if you've got a suggestion for a future easy game mechanic tutorial, then please do drop me a comment. And if I can, then I will, as always, get around to making it. Um, and thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.